Hi, this is David Davis, and this demo about using the vSphere 5 web client is from my VMware vSphere 5 video training course. Now here I am on my local computer, and I brought up a new Firefox web browser interface, and I'm just going to type in https colon slash slash vcenter5 colon 9443 slash vSphere dash client. I'll press enter on that. And I already have Adobe Flash installed on this local computer, and it's integrated with this web browser. Now, I'm above the minimum requirements here of uh, Firefox 3.5 or 3.6. I'm actually running Firefox 4. But this is what the login screen looks like for the VMware vSphere web client. Notice the server URL right there. And then here's where we would type in our username and password, just like you would with a traditional Windows-based vSphere client. I'll press enter there to log in. And here we go. This is it. This is the vSphere 5 web client. Let me maximize this window so we can go full screen and you can get the full effect here. So first off, you'll notice that it looks very similar to the vSphere client over in Windows. On the left-hand side here, by default, you're in your vSphere host and clusters inventory. So I've got my vCenter server here at the top. I've got my data centers. Underneath that, I've got my HADRS cluster. And then in that cluster, of course, I've already added my ESXi servers and my virtual machines. So that part is very similar. I can click on any of those servers. And then, of course, here in the middle pane, I've got the traditional summary tab with information about the server. It says its status is normal. ESXi version 5.0. vMotion is enabled. We can scroll over here to the right and get information about the physical server hardware, CPU and memory uh, utilization, networking and storage information is all available right here from the summary tab. Moving on from the summary tab, you can go to the monitor tab here where you can review task information and a task status. If we scroll over here to the right, uh, start time and complete time, if I click on one of these tasks here, you see information about it down here uh, in the bottom pane. I can also go to events, where I can filter through events, and I can even sort events by the type of event. There's uh, info events all the way down to error events. You've got performance charts and alarms. Currently, no alarms are triggered. Let's go into the virtual machine tab. Here you can see the status of your virtual machines. And you can even right click on those virtual machines and then go in to power on those virtual machines, configure the virtual machines, migrate, convert, clone, rename, remove, or delete the virtual machines, or even take snapshots or bring up the snapshot manager. From here, let's go into the networks tab. And here in the networks tab, you can see status about uh, different virtual networks running on that ESXi server. If we go into storage, you can see information about the different data stores that this host can access. And I can even right click on those data stores and register a virtual machine from the data store or create a brand new virtual machine on that data store. Up here on the top, you notice I can opt to create a new virtual machine, a new resource pool, a new vApp, and even perform configuration on the host such as entering maintenance mode. If we go to a virtual machine in the virtual infrastructure, we get the same type of summary information that you would see in the summary tab of the Windows-based vSphere client. Information about the state of the virtual machine, guest operating system, IP address, DNS server, VMware tools information, and then on the right-hand side here, information about the virtual hardware configured for that virtual machine. Back here to the left, I can even opt to launch the console for that virtual machine. which brings up a fully functional virtual machine console directly inside my web browser. Back here in the vSphere client, notice on the left-hand side here, uh, besides the hosts and clusters tab, I've also got virtual machines and templates, I've got data stores, as well as networking. All the traditional inventory areas are represented here on the left-hand side. I can also choose to collapse or expand that left side of the screen if I want to, to give me extra real estate in the vSphere web client. On the right-hand side of the screen here, I really like this uh, recent task drop-down 
the work in progress, and the alarm information. Of course, I can choose to collapse or expand this as well. Notice when I collapse it, how I've got uh, little notes here that represent each of the different uh, task, work in progress, or alarm. So if I do collapse it, I can still see if new work in progress, task, or alarms appear on the right-hand side. Speaking of the work in progress, let me show you how that works. Let's say that I decide to perform a uh, configuration edit on this open filer virtual machine. I'll click on the virtual machine, and then I'll go up here to the configuration dropdown. I'll go into edit settings, I can go down to New Device, and then let's say that I add a new CD DVD drive. I'll click Add there. We can see the new device has been added, but I haven't yet clicked OK. And let's say, uh-oh, someone walked in, and uh, they have a question for me. I need to check the status of a virtual machine for them. But I'm in the middle of this configuration. I'm not sure if this is how I want to leave it. What I can do is I can go up here, and I can click on this Minimize and Finish This Work Later. So all I have to do is click that right double arrow, and then notice this new entry here in the work in progress window. So I've got this work in progress, but now I can go over and I can check on the status of another virtual machine. Maybe I need to power off that virtual machine or restart it, uh, launch the console, whatever it might be. Then later I can come back and I can click on my work in progress here. And there we go. That brings up the window I was in before. I can click OK. And now I've just uh, created a new task. Notice the task is reconfiguring the virtual machine. It completed very quickly, and then we can see we've got a check mark there that shows us that that reconfiguration task was successful. So that's how the work in progress window works. I think it's a really cool feature, and it's something that the traditional Windows-based vSphere client didn't offer. Now, besides configuring hosts, virtual machines, templates, storage, and networking from this view, notice this little drop-down menu up here. If I click on this down arrow, Notice I can go into vCenter Management, Search, Monitoring, or System Administration. If I go into System Administration and click on Plugin Management, notice that I do have a plugin on this list. So I can actually view the plugins that are installed with my vCenter server. Unfortunately, I cannot install new plugins and use those with the vSphere 5 web based client. Like I said earlier, that's the biggest limitation that I see with this new web-based client. And I'm sure that that's something they'll be resolving in future releases. Back up to the drop-down triangle up here. Going back to vCenter Server Management, that'll take us back where we were. Something else we can do here is to go into Monitoring. So let's go to the Events Console. And here you get a much larger Events Console than what you saw before. Notice how you can filter, you can sort, and then you can even export directly from this console. Another dropdown that you should be aware of is the administrator dropdown up here. And actually, this is just your login name. If you were logged in as David or Bob, it would say David or Bob right there. And then this is where you would log out for security purposes so that you don't leave the vSphere client up and running in your web browser all the time. You know, perhaps someone else could walk up and actually uh, start administering the virtual infrastructure if you didn't lock uh, your desktop. Something else you can do is you can get help right here. There's a very nice uh, help interface. If we go into the table of contents, it brings up a new window. And then here we can search through the table of contents or the index or even do searches related to the new vSphere web client. There's a lot of information in here. And then we can also go directly to the VMware Documentation Center uh, right from this link. If we close out this tab and go back to the vSphere web client, uh, something else you can do is uh, perform searches right up here from the uh, top right hand search box. So let's say I type in vCenter and press enter. It tells me that it found a virtual machine named vCenter or I can just click on all results. And it shows me all the results that it found that contain the word vCenter. I can even go here and I can perform advanced searches just like I can do over in the Windows based vSphere client. Now we're back here in the vCenter management view showing our host and virtual machines inventory. And that really brings me to the end of my demonstration of what the vSphere 5 web client can do for you. Thanks for watching. For more information regarding our training, please visit www.trainsignal.com.